Here we are together again on the radio. This piece from a website called AskMen.com. Written by a guy named Kurt Smith. Here's what he says. Listen carefully, please. If your woman changed from the first day of your marriage, it should not come across as a complete surprise. It's a well-known fact that most women change after marriage both mentally and physically. So before you commit to life imprisonment, make sure you know what signs to look for to prevent yourself from tying the knot with a chameleon. And that is defined by Kurt Smith as a woman who is temporarily adapting to her man's needs by camouflaging her true colors in order to retain him. It says here, throughout history, men have always sought to better understand life's greatest mystery, women. But after millions of years of trying, we still don't have a set of stable rules that can help us predict what a woman will be like after marriage. Women are hard to understand because they act differently. According to their social class, the period in which they live, medieval period versus romantic period versus the 60s, and across different cultures. Therefore, it is useless to try to come up with a strict set of rules that apply to all women in general. Instead, concentrate on uncovering some of the sneaky tricks women commonly use to trap a man into marriage. Maybe we will never fully understand women, but at least we won't be shocked when they finally reveal to us what they are really like. After marriage, of course. Over time, men have evolved to desire certain characteristics in women. Each man has his unique preferences, but in general, most men prefer a woman who has a beautiful face, fairly sized breasts, hips in proportion to her breast size, and so on. Unfortunately, not all women were created equal. Some women are naturally more beautiful than others, while other women are more voluptuous than others. They all, however, share one common denomination. Women are natural-born illusionists. Much like a chameleon uses camouflage as its number one defense to ensure its survival. Women also use camouflaging techniques to ensure their success rate in finding a husband. Through evolution, Women have learned to adapt and change accordingly in order to survive the crazy game of love and attract future providers. Men. These are some of the techniques used by women to hook a man into marriage. But once the union is official, they stop camouflaging. And the poor sucker is left wondering what happened to his woman. And then he gives the list. One. Women change their physical appearance. While some women wax their mustaches, others pluck their eyebrows, all in order to look more feminine. Unfortunately, some women will stop waxing and plucking once the knot is tied, and before you know it, your wife Barbara is really Bob with two caterpillars crawling on her head. Women change the color of their hair to look like beautiful, famous celebrities. Long nails are sexy, but not when they're fake. A face full of foundation and powder, as well as eyeliner, lipstick, and mascara, is never a good sign either. Two. Women use gimmicks to hide their flaws. Believe it or not, some women still wear control-top underwear, which he calls girdles, to keep their waists and bumper closer to their hips. So don't be surprised if after marriage you discover a little extra cheese laying next to you in bed. 
Also, if your woman constantly wraps a who would know who told you about this? If your woman constantly wraps a sweater or a sweatshirt around her waist, then she likely has something to hide. I can guarantee you that she's not making a fashion statement. Recently, women have begun to use this new bra that is apparently filled with water to make their breasts look and feel larger than they really are. But how will they explain the breast reduction when the bra comes off? Dehydration, perhaps? Other women prefer breast implants, something that most men won't complain about. But a recent study by the Journal of the American Medical Association shows that women with breast augmentations are more likely to drink, use the pill, and have more sexual partners. This ought to make men think twice before getting married. You can get around all these tricks by taking your woman to the beach or a swimming pool before getting serious with her. If she refuses to wear a bikini or jump into the water, then you can bet your bottom dollar that she has something lizardy to hide. Three. Women pretend to act in a socially acceptable way. In the hopes of catching a man quickly, some women claim that it's not the size of a man's manhood that counts. It's what he does with it that's important. But what you don't know is that these women are laughing inside. And when things in the bedroom begin to slow down, these same women will be looking for bigger and better things. You could tell that a woman is lying if she's checking out the size of your feet or hands while she swears that it's not the size of the boat but the motion of the ocean that counts. The purpose of this article, says the author, is not to offend anyone. It's simply to give married men a better understanding of why their wives change after marriage and why single men consider marriage to be man's downfall. The only way to have a clue of what your potential wife will eventually become is to look at what her mother looks like. Children usually grow up to act and resemble, act like and resemble their parents. This is another good reason to meet the family before getting serious. No matter what a married man does, he will find out how fake his wife is as soon as she begins to let herself go. There is no way around this sad fact of life. The only thing I can say to console you is that women are more forgiving and still men attractive, I'm sorry, still find men attractive in their natural homo sapien physical state. It's uh, Kurt Smith who calls himself a relationship correspondent. He just writes a blog or a column for this website, askman.com. Okay. I'd like to hear from, uh, well, I'd like to hear on, on, on two counts your reactions to this uh, column. One, if you married somebody and you experienced these changes, I'd like to know what changes took place. What woman did you think you were getting, and then what did you actually get? And secondly, and you can be a man or a woman to answer this question, simply, is this column accurate and fair? Tom Likens, 1-800-5800. Tom. Tom Likens, 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likens Show. It's the Tom Likens Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are here at 1-800-5800-TOM. This all began uh, with an article talking about all the things to, that women do to uh, snooker you into marriage, and later on, they change. Let's say hello to Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Father? I'm okay. Hey, I listen to you religiously, and you hit it right on the button. It does not pay to get married these days, you know. It does not pay for a man to get married. A woman, yeah, yeah. A woman can get married, and she makes out like a bandit with half of my stuff, you know. That's right. But, yeah, I, I got into a relationship, you know, and it turned out great. I mean, we knocked it out five, six times a day. 
Uh, but just as soon as I moved into her and just as soon as uh, I knocked her up, man, it was over with. She took that away from me first thing, you know. Then then went the checkbook, you know, and, and she was giving me allowance. Can you believe I, I allowed it to go that far that she would she would give me an allowance of my money? <laughs> How did you let it get that far? Yeah, yeah, so I, I ended up, uh, I stayed with her for quite a few years because of the kids, but um, I've been gone from her for about two years now, and, and it is just clear saying it, it is worth it. You know, now I've, I've, I go out all the time with different girls. Oh, it's, it's a blast. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking imprisoning myself, you know. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, and you know, everybody seems to think, oh, it's going to be great, you know, I'll wake up to a warm body every morning. Man, I'm, I, I think I'm, I think I'm waking up to a lot better warm bodies nowadays, now that I'm, I'm single again, you know. I will bet that you are. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I go out whenever I want to. I don't have to go to some lame family functions and put on a fake smile, you know. Uh, it's just, it's beautiful, you know. You wake up whenever you want. If you, if you want to clean the house, then you clean the house, you know. Otherwise, it's like, oh well, you know. I don't have anyone nagging me anymore. I just wanted to say, you, you hit it right on the button, honestly. You know, it's, it's a shame, but in this day and age, for a man to get married, he's only looking to lose, you know. Uh, uh, There's it, nothing in it for men. Nothing. Uh, no. No, it's not. And and you know the women, they they get it all. You know, I, I she hit me for a hundred and thirty seven thousand, uh, eight hundred and and forty dollars a month. You know, and I got the kids over at my house more than she has them over at hers. Uh, you know, I'm I'm paying her and she's making as much as me. You know, it, it just it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the courts even said, yeah, we know it doesn't make any sense, but this is what you're going to pay, you know? <laughs> oh, I know. But I was just wanting to let you know, man, that, that you you hit it right on the bot, uh, right on the button, and and you're doing you're doing God's work, man, for man. You know, just keep on telling them because there's a lot of fools out there that all they want to do is is get married. And, and there's nothing in it for us. No doubt about it. Jim, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. John. Daily, daily dollar short, man. <coughs> I got uh, married to uh What do you mean her. you're a day late and a dollar short? I've been here all along. Where have you been? <laughs> you know, I don't I don't get uh, your show up where I live. I, I have to travel there to receive it, so... Uh, anyway, I got married about a year ago, year and a half ago. Uh, same thing, you know, nice, nice situation, nerve, good job, you know, decent person, and that, the wheels fell off it as soon as I started riding it, man. Well, and, and you got married, why? Uh, because I wasn't thinking. Okay. So what happened? How did she change? Uh, you know, like I said, it, I, first thing off, uh, we get married, and next thing you know, she's got to have back surgery. And, I mean, this is like two months into it, and, and I mean, now she's been out of work for damn near nine months, out of the whole deal, and all everything else. I mean, the, the bedroom's gone, the, the whole bit. Wow. So, anyway. So why are you I, still there? Uh, you know what? I'm working on that one, Tom, as we speak. How much work does it take? What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> trying to... Any up for a lawyer and handle business. You understand that for every two days you stay, you owe one day of alimony. All right. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That means the longer you wait, the more time it takes, the more expensive it's going to be for you. Right. Yeah, no, I hear that, Tom. I'm working on it, man. So. All right, I'll turn you loose, but hey, thanks for taking my call. All right, John. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Nimai on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nimai. What's up, brother? Not much. What kind of name, is, ne no what kind of name is Nimai, by the way? You have no idea. I guess you don't want to tell me. Right you are, bro. She's not listening to me. Yeah, tell me. Dude. I met this chick, right? And I was in love, Tom. But guess what, bro? As soon as I say I do, she said I don't. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped putting out, bro. She stopped. 
She wanted me to stop smoking weed. She wanted me to change. Everything I did was wrong. Everything that she loved about me was just bothering her somehow. I mean, it's ridiculous, Tom. So then tell me this. Uh, were you a listener back then when you got married? Uh, no, man. I moved to Los Angeles about a year ago. Uh, How long have you been married? I've been married two years, Tom. So you were 22 when you got married? Yes. Now, now as a listener, I'm sure you know that that we're not a that we're not in approval of that. I I wish I would have known better, Tom. So uh, let me guess. Uh, she also locked you in for the long haul by one of those rare times you had sex. She got pregnant. Actually, Tom, she got pregnant about a month, maybe two, after we got married. Of course, she did, and that was the end of the sex. You know what? After she, after we had the baby, no, she couldn't have sex for a while. And after she had no more skills, after the three months after she had the kid, she just never put out, man. By the very, way, that's rare. that's what she told you that the doctor said she can't have sex for three months. After that's that's what the it. doctor. Uh, who knows if the doctor really said that? You don't even know if that's true. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was the case. That was the case. How do you know? Because uh, uh, she had a C-section, she couldn't have sex for three months. Well, again, how did the doctor say it to you? Uh, no, that's what I heard anyway. Uh, it's not, that's what she told you? Yes, Tom. We don't even know if that's true. I guess not. Right. So but, uh, now she's locked you in, right? Yeah. Oh, why, why are you staying? Well, you're not going to believe it, Tom. Uh... I mean, every time I said something about listening to Tom on the radio, you know, she would go, oh, Tom is a pig, he's a misogynist, man, chauvinistic, and this and that. And I always keep trying to, you know, make her listen to Tom. And uh, If she hates it that much, what does that tell you? Well, let me tell you what happened, Tom. Uh, I, uh, I kind of got her to listen to you. I kind of tuned it in the radio a few times, you know, when I was in the car with her. And uh, I guess something you said clicked in, man. Because, with uh, you or with her? Huh? Something clicked in with you or with her? No, with her, Tom. Uh-huh. I guess when you said that if she doesn't give it up, we can get it somewhere else, I think that's when she realized, you know what, that she had to put out. <laughs> well, there you go. Did she start putting out at that point? Yeah, she started putting out, man. She's, uh, I mean, she has the dinner ready when I come home, and it's all thanks to you, Tom. I love that part. And now you are using condoms, I hope. Birth control. No, 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 no. Listen to me. <laughs> Women lie about using birth control. Do you understand? I understand, Tom. I already told her I want no more kids. I want this enough. I'm a student. Like this one I want now, and I, I really know better now. So you do use condoms, right? I don't, Tom. Listen to me. <laughs> they lie. <laughs> what kind of birth control is she supposedly on? Uh, I see her. I I see her take it every day. I remind her, but I couldn't tell you the name. No, no. So it's a pill. It's a pill, yes. And you see her take it every day. Not you don't miss once in a while. I do miss once in a while. Uh, uh -huh. She says she takes it, though. Uh, yeah, well, of course she says that. Uh, it, it, <laughs> she did other things, too, to uh, con you into getting married and staying there, didn't she? Yeah, in a, in a way, yeah. Why would you believe this? I don't know, Tom. Let me um, let me ask you a question, Nehemiah. Um, is, is your wife Hispanic? No, she's not. She's actually American, Tom. She's American? Yeah. Meaning, um, meaning not of uh, Hispanic descent? No, I'm the one that's Hispanic. I'm from Spain. Yes. All right, and she is not Hispanic. Okay, because we she's did a show... From, she's actually a California girl, Tom. Well, there are many California girls whose last names are Gonzalez or <laughs> Hernandez or whatever. No, that's not the case. She's uh, Italian, Italian. Okay. All right. I'm telling you, you need to wear a condom, because I'm telling you how from the air. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry.
Oh, Dom, I'm going to say I'm going to take it to heart, brother. Please. Uh, wrap, wrapping it up from now on. Please. And uh, you know what, Tom? I really felt like at that point I didn't know I was staying in the relationship. But since I got her to listen to you, man, she she knows. She She's knows straight up. Tom. Yep. And I, I encourage all the guys to go home tonight and tell them if you don't put out... There's plenty of other places to get it, and I will go and get it. Be a man. Step up to the plate. You'll be surprised at the result. I said that before, Tom and Tom. You know what? You either got to put out or I'm, or I'm out. When I started listening to you, I said that. You know what? If you don't put out, I'm out. Good for you. And then, you know what she did? She once in a while, once a week or whatnot. And I told her, listen to Tom. And after she did, man, she's been, she's been good, Tom. Thanks uh, to you, brother. I am proud of you. Likeus. Tom Likeus. So you're just looking for sex? Of course. You must be a new listener. You must be kidding. You think that's what makes people happy? That's what, I'll tell you what, that's what makes men happy. It's the Tom Likeus Show. It's the Tom Likeus Show. Go. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We started our conversation this hour with a blog written by somebody named Kirk Smith called The Fake Female Trap. And it talks about the things women do when they first meet you to snare you into their spider web and then uh, the things that change once you marry them. I'm wondering if this happened to you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brian, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Tom. Brian. You are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. Thank you so much. Listen, that last gentleman you were just entertaining, uh, he should have his own show, Tom, let's face it. That guy was classic. He was great. <laughs> Uh, Tom, you, you mentioned something to us, uh, us married fellows out there about some two-to-one ratio. Forget it, Tom. Forget it. All, all I could do at this point is simply fantasize what it would be to be a 44-year-old guy who, you know, looks like I do, the shape I'm in, the money I have, and be a single bachelor. <laughs> it's, it's only a fantasy, Tom. It, it it could not happen in my lifetime. It is it was not drawn up that way. I, I love your show. I love listening. It's it's entertaining. It's humorous. It's educational. But uh, I knocked my beautiful wife up at 24. I'm 44 now. 20 years later, Tom. Between the mortgage, the insurances, the college tuitions, the high school tuitions, the car payments, the cell phones, the gym memberships, I <laughs> on occasion I may wake up and. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it'd be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, uh, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> if your wife will let you. See, yeah, I, no, ask I, mommy if you can go out to play. And then this other guy talking about complaining that his wife hasn't worked for nine months. Tom, listen, I came in like, like Superman. And my wife hasn't worked for 20 years. And, uh, you know, when we met, we met in the nightclub. And, you know, she looked like little, little Miss Madonna and blah, blah, blah and all that. And she's still, I mean, she's very, very sexy. There's no problems there. Another key is that your wife continues to sleep in Victoria's Secrets and does her hair and her eyes and gets to the tanning salon and does all that it's not the problem it's just as the red-blooded american male at 44 it doesn't really matter i mean if if guys leave you know the hottest models uh, for whatever reason you know it's not because of what they look like visually you know right but the thing is uh, what guys really want is variety <laughs> that's what we want and you're not but... supposed to say it <laughs> It's, there is no door, Tom. I, I just, uh, you know, the, the the part that would go with it. Now, remember, at 2425, Tom, there was no rational thinking that went into any of this, okay? It was bang, 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 and have a good time, and boom. And then, of course, 
do the right thing, okay? So for the males across the nation that have done the right thing, we come up at 20, and I understand some of these guys and their nightmares or their wives that put on 80 pounds, you know, she's sitting around doing nothing dead weight. I mean, that would be a nightmare, and every now and then we'll hear something on CNN of what how some guys, you know, did what they had to do, which is ridiculous. But, but back to my wife, who is very, very sexy, it's, it's the, the overhead right now. I'm almost a little bit more stimulated by a woman who's making $200,000 a year that may not look as well. <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> Brian, you know you're, becoming, you're becoming cynical, for God's sake. <laughs> About 20 years too late. I still consider myself the prize in the home. And, you know, the, the, this mentality of, hey, baby, put out, put out, come on, put out, or... No, 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 no. I, 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 I still think, you know, when, when we, when we have that time together, which is often, except for about a seven day run during the month, it's very, very good. But there's a lot of foundation and, and a lot of prep work that I do prior to, and most of it is, is financial, you know, is, is getting that table set with, uh, you know, gifts and flowers and jewelry and, and, but like I talked to my wife earlier today, right? right. I said, honey, uh, our son's been home from college. I said, I have uh, your green uh, teddy. It's laid out on the bed. No excuses, my love. I'm going to watch a little bit of Australian Open. Don't wait up for me. But at about from 10.30 to about 11.15, uh, you're mine. I lay $300 inside of that, and uh, that's it. I'll walk to the lab when I get home, and I think that's about the extent, Tom. But once again, I, I let her know early on what my expectations are for this evening. The only other thing that's difficult, Tom, is when the kids get older, is it's kind of hard to do the whole, you know, pumps with, not that they come into the room, but, you know, sometimes you make some noises. So uh, I'll hang up now, Tom, and I want you to let me know how guys like us take care of that with the uh, the kids a little bit older besides picking our spots. You're the man like it. Later, buddy. Thank you for the call. Well, you got to get somebody to take care of your kids. You need child care, buddy. That's what you need. No doubt about it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Cheyenne on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. How are you? Great. Good. Um, first time caller. Um, I haven't been listening for long, but from what I hear so far, I think you give great advice to these young twenty year old boys who are actually getting pussy whipped and marry the pussy and not the heart, or they don't marry. They need to separate emotion from physical, so I think you're giving them great advice. Um, I just got married. I'm 37. I would have never gotten married in my 20s. My husband is the same age as me. Um, we didn't get married in our 20s, and he got to know me, and that's the problem with a lot of your callers. They're not, you know, they're, they're looking. It's so superficial. They, they want these Barbies, and they take them home, and they're not operating when you wind them up anymore. You don't marry them. You have sex with them. You party with them. You have fun with them. I, and I, and the, and the I say too. you don't marry any of them. You, you don't. And, you, and the girls, this is, and you know you have a... I mean, you, you're, you're lucky you. It. You got a man to, to buy the product. That's great. You sold the bill of goods. Wonderful. Good for you. But if, if I'm advising a guy, why ever buy the product? Hey, you know what? If she's hot and my husband married me while I was still hot and I take care of our home and everything else, he I think he did damn good. But a lot of these guys are just looking at one thing and they're wondering, well, what happened to the boobs? What happened to the hair? What happened to your club look? It's gone because they never took the time to get to know him. Of course, that all comes back the minute you get divorced. Suddenly these women go to the gym. Suddenly they're back at the clubs and they look like they belong at the clubs. But they're marrying the wrong women. Hello? And that's because they're not old enough. They're all still 20. They're stupid. No, no, no. There's plenty of women older who do that kind of thing. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, if you don't marry them, they always put their best foot forward. Which women? Women in Orange County? Or Any women. women? Any like women. The- no, no. This Any is not women. True. I mean, there are no, exceptions. Have- you may be one of them, but uh, generally speaking, that's the way it is. This is not true. I work, I go to school, I take care of my house, and we have a brand new baby. Hello? But that's you we're talking about. That's and my husband every night. Something is wrong. But that's one person. 
No, this is not. This I'm is sure you morning. have six I'm friends just... who are just like you. The point I'm making to you is that I'm talking about the 150 million women who live in this country. This, I think they're, 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 they're the wrong women. That's just the bottom the, line. The whole 150 million of them? Well, here's the thing. If they took the time to get to know this woman and say, okay, you think they keep that up for that long without getting the ring? How long can they keep it up? They gotta have found out something about him. There was a sign. Darling, I'm telling you that there are more women like that than there are like you. You know what? There's a handful of them out there just like me. A handful. That's right. But a handful is not enough for 150 million men. So the bottom line is most men should never, ever, ever get married. No, they don't get married in their 20s. Don't get married, period. And what's in it for a guy? My my husband has a great time. Your husband is one person. Well, he took the time to get to know me. Again. Somebody is going to win the big spin this Saturday. Do you know that? Yeah. Is it going to be you? No, we're not playing the lottery here. There's it's a the same thing. It's the same. Somebody will win. It just won't be anybody you know. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe those are your 150 million callers. Congratulations that you have that many callers that are. I didn't say I had that many callers. That's how many yeah. men there are in America. Right. That are making stupid decisions. And it's sad enough that. I mean, yeah, yeah, to get married is a stupid decision. Why would getting married? Why would getting married be a smart decision? Why? Where are the real dads? Why do they have to even call you to figure this out? Come on already. You know, there's a bigger God than, than like us to tell somebody don't get married in your 20s. I tell them don't get married, period. What's in it for most men? Divorce, Later on, I think costs. when they get older and they mature, that could change. And maybe not for you, not for everybody. Well, I but. found out by getting married and divorced that had I never gotten married, I would have been much happier. And I am much happier. Well, I'm glad you're happy. And I think most guys would be happier. Because I got married four times. What did I gain from it except expenses and heartache? Stress. Okay, honey, if you're on if you're on the road and you're listening to Tom and you agree with him that you should have never got married, the knocks are going to be changed today. On no. that note, I'm out of here. All right, thank you so much. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Or if you're listening to us, let's say on our podcast, and you'd like to hear the show live. The show airs live from 3 to 8 p.m. Pacific time here in the good old USA. You just go to blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button, and you'll be listening live. The Tom Likas Show.